Hi, my name is James Nye, and I'm professor of biological sciences in the Department of Ecology, Behavior, and Evolution at the University of California, San Diego. And I wanted to tell you about a recent study that appeared in the journal Current Biology that I and my co-authors, including Dr. Dong Shihao and Dr. Ken Tan, conducted. I love my morning coffee. But why do I love coffee and what's going on? Am I getting some kind of buzz out of it? In fact, the caffeine leads to the production of increased dopamine inside my brain. And this is something, the linking of pleasure and dopamine that we curiously enough also see in many animals, such as our friend, the honeybee right here. So this project was looking at the question of, can we find evidence that dopamine is being released when bees are experiencing pleasurable activities, something that we already know, but what if they are attacked by a predator such as a giant hornet? What happens to their dopamine levels and how does it affect the way that they signal and communicate inside the colony? Recent research has demonstrated that honeybees have a boost of dopamine, essentially in the pleasurable anticipation of food when they first land on a flower or when they start waggle dancing inside the nest. But we wanted to see what would happen if bees were attacked by this natural hornet predator that you see here, Vespa mandarinae. Looks pretty ferocious, doesn't it? So what we did is we would attack the bees with this predator and then we would observe their behavior inside the nest. Normally, honeybees will waggle dance for a good resource, but if they encounter danger, they can produce the soft signal, which is directed at other waggle dancers. Can you hear the signal beep? Beep, there it is again. Normally, bees that receive the stop signal will stop dancing and therefore stop recruiting nestmates to a dangerous food source. In this case, we found that experience of the predator decreased brain dopamine, but also a bee receiving a stop signal alone, that warning signal, is enough to immediately drop her dopamine levels. But when we feed the bees with dopamine, it's almost as if they become more resistant to the danger. They spend longer time on the feeder after being attacked. They actually will continue to feed, and when they go back into the nest, they will waggle dance and produce fewer stop signals. So almost as if they're a little bit less fearful. So where do we go from here? We still have this amazing animal, our friend the honeybee, and we have a lot to learn about what's going on, in particular, in its brain. How is the brain rapidly able to increase and decrease the level of dopamine? We think the answer lies in the biosynthesis of dopamine from its precursors and then also in its rapid degradation. So please stay tuned.